Okay, so this video we're going to take a look at transformers. We're going to look at the sort of the design or the three key parts of a transformer. We're going to look, then look at how a transformer actually works. We're then going to use look at some of the sources of inefficiency in a transformer using Lenz's law. And then finally, we're going to explain how a transformer is actually useful in terms of reducing transmission energy losses. So the first thing is, if you haven't watched my previous video looking at induction, I highly recommend looking at that before you watch this one. Uh, but if you have, let's get started. Okay, so this is the basic setup of a transformer. Uh, you have a it's called an iron core, which is sometimes made up of two C-shaped cores put together. And then you have uh, a coil of wire on the left-hand side connected to some sort of AC power source. That's called the primary coil. And on the right-hand side, you have another coil of wire connected to either some sort of circuit, some sort of voltmeter, that kind of thing. And that's called a secondary coil. And that's it. So a transformer in terms of its parts is a very simple device, but it's a very useful one. Okay, so what we're going to do is look at a few key questions. Why do we have to have an AC voltage or EMF supplied? Why is there an iron core there? And how can we change the output voltage magnitude, which is going to be important in terms of why it's a transformer is useful? Okay, so why does the input have to be alternating current? So we are trying to induce an EMF in the secondary coil. And since the primary coil is stationary, uh, what you should know from my previous video is that to, for a stationary coil to induce a current in another stationary coil, we need an alternating current to give us an alternating magnetic field. That's, that's what gives us the flux lines cutting through the secondary coil. So that's why this doesn't work with DC. If there were a DC current in the primary coil, the magnetic field would be static and therefore no current would be induced in the secondary coil. Okay, so that's why it needs to be AC. Why is there an iron core? Because as we saw in my last video, you don't, you can do this across an air gap. So if you have two coils next to each other, one with an alternating current, you will induce a current in the other one. What's the point of the iron core? Well, what we're trying to do is strengthen the magnetic field and therefore strengthen the field that's interacting with the secondary coil. So iron is used because it's a soft magnetic material, which means it's very easy to, to be magnetized and demagnetized and turn into a magnet. So when you pass an AC current through the primary coil, that creates an alternating magnetic field, and that means the iron core become, has an alternating magnetic field around it as well, because it's been turned into a magnet by the field around the coil. Okay. And the field around the iron core is cutting through the secondary coil. Okay, so let's take a look at that. So what we're doing is we've got an alternating uh, current or field around the primary core. That turns the core into an alternating field and that induces the current. That's the idea. So how can we change the output voltage magnitude, which is actually our objective of a transformer? So if we can get the iron core magnetic field to cut through more turns of wire on the secondary side, you can induce a larger EMF, and now we call that a step up transformer. If we reduce the number of turns of wire on the secondary side, the field is cutting through fewer like a shorter distance of conductor if you like and that's going to give you a smaller emf for a step down transformer okay so here we've got the two types of transformer on the left we've got step up so we can see that we've got five turns on the primary side 20 turns on the secondary side so that's going to mean that if there are more turns of wire on the secondary side, there's going to be more flux cutting. So that's why we get a larger EMF on that side. Okay. 
Step down, we've got fewer turns on the secondary side, which means there's going to be a smaller amount of flux cutting. Therefore, we get a smaller EMF induced on that side. Okay, so, so another question. So how can we actually get those values for voltage and current that we just saw? Well, we are going to be using something called a turns ratio of a transformer. So turns ratio is the number of turns on the secondary side divided by the number of turns on the primary side. And what we find out is the voltage follows exactly the same ratio. And what that means is if, if you have twice as many turns on the secondary side, i.e. NS over MP is equal to 2, the voltage on the secondary side is double the voltage on the primary side as well. So that's how we can predict the voltage. So if we see that, on the step up transformer, we can see the turns ratio is is four, because there are four times as many turns on the right hand side. Therefore, the voltage is stepped up by a factor of four to 400. The same with the step down transformer, the turns ratio here is 0.2. Therefore, the voltage has been multiplied by 0.2 to give us 200 volts. So how can we then predict the current as well? So this is done using conservation of energy, or essentially what we say is the power into a transformer must be equal to the power out. And in circuitry, we can calculate the power going into something if we know what the voltage is and the current is going in, and the same with the voltage and current going out. So we can use these as a way of figuring out what the currents are. But just to bear in mind, this does assume a transformer is 100% efficient, uh, which is actually a very good assumption. Most of them are in the 99, if not 99.9% .9 efficient. So they're very, very efficient. So this is a very reasonable assumption. So let's apply that to this side. So if we want to calculate the secondary currents, we just rearrange the equation slightly, plug the numbers in, and that's where the 2.5 and the 10 amps value came from. We're just using this equation right here. And we can see on the diagram in both cases, the power in is equal to the power going out. Okay, so why might a transformer not be 100% efficient? What's the cause of it being 99 or 99.9% efficient? Well, the thing you have to remember is iron is a conductor, so it has free electrons. It's not a particularly good one, but it is a conductor. So we have an alternating magnetic field from the primary coil cutting through it all the time. And that means we're going to induce a current, and Lenz's law tells us we're going to introduce a current to oppose the change that created it. So if we have a current, that's going to transfer electrical energy to thermal energy. That's what currents do. And that's going to be uh, essentially wasted energy. And we call those currents eddy currents. And the other thing is this current is going to act to weaken the magnetic field around the iron core. Because as Lenz's law says, it opposes the change that creates it. So that's our realistically our source of energy loss in a transformer as heat and also the field around the induced current weakening the field as well okay so key question here what is the point of a transformer what is the advantage of using one so the key is this equation here the equation to calculate the power or the en electrical energy transferred to heat per second by a resistor so a transmission line is a type of resistor, a very small resistance, but a resistor. So if you look at this equation, if the current is smaller, that's going to significantly reduce the amount of energy transferred to thermal energy as it travels across the country or wherever you're transferring energy. So you're going to massively improve your efficiency of your transmission system if you can make the current really small. And that's why we want a transformer. Because if we can make the voltage very high, we can make the current very low, and then we can get rid of our losses. And this is why Nikola Tesla, one of his most famous uh, inventions, is the transformer. And this is why he advocated the use of AC electricity. Okay, so that's what we want. We want a small current. 
So a question I quite often get asked with this is, well, hang on, we know this other equation's calculate power, it's V squared over R, so surely high voltage means a high transmission loss. Um, no, not quite. So the problem with that logic is the V in that equation doesn't stand for voltage. In P equals IV, it does, but in P equals V squared over R, P does not stand, V, sorry, does not stand for voltage, it stands for potential difference, or the change in energy of each coulomb of charge as it passes through a component. So potential difference is calculated using Ohm's law, which is this one here. So you can see here, if current is really small, potential difference is also really small, and therefore using P equals V squared over R, we can see the power loss is very small too. So how big is the potential difference across a transmission line? Uh, well, let's take some standard values. So uh, a very standard voltage for a transmission line is 100 kV and a current 0 0.010 amps. Uh, it's a very low resistance uh, transmission line, so we're gonna give it 0 0.10 ohms. Calculate the voltage at the other end of the wire. So well, we can calculate the potential difference or the change in voltage using this equation here. And we can see we get one times center minus three volts. So the voltage at the other end, you can see is pretty much identical to the voltage at the start there. The voltage change is very small and we've lost very little energy in our wire. Okay. So that completes looking at the transformer in terms of how it works and what the point of it is. So at this point, see if you can explain each of these things. If you can, great. If you can't, that's the time to go back and have another look.